My name is Tom Waters, and you're watching Sales and Cinema. The late 1990s comedy, Office Space, explores the frustrations of corporate conformity. Sounds like somebody's got a case of the Mondays. In the corporate world, you are selling your personal brand to your employer. Hello, Peter. What's happening? Whether you're interviewing for your first position, requesting a raise from upper management, or vying for your next promotion, you're attempting to make a sale. In today's episode, we are going to examine three applications of rapport building. The movie depicts a lesser known type of interview at a company. Have you seen this? We're all screwed. This type of interview determines if you could keep the job that you already have, led by consultants known as efficiency experts. Our first scene examines what happens when you fail to build rapport with your audience. Tom acts as a client liaison within the company. The Bobs are trying to identify whether his role is essential to the business. Tom is so focused on the possibility that he may be fired, he is unable to effectively communicate the value he brings to the company. No. Yeah, I mean, sometimes. As a result, he fails to establish rapport and maintains an adversarial relationship with his interviewers. I have people skills. I am good at dealing with people. Can't you understand it? What the hell is wrong with you people? Even Milton has to steal his stapler because he's completely incapable of establishing rapport with his colleagues. A popular relationship building technique many sales trainers love to encourage is through personal rapport, usually executed through superficial chit chat. Brian, for example, has 37 pieces of flair on today, okay? But these tactics are often completely obvious when they're insincere. All right. And they can get downright cringeworthy. <laughs> The next interview is an example of how personal rapport building can backfire if executed incorrectly. You are Michael Bolton? Yeah. Are you any relation to the pop singer? <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I love his music. I do. I'm a Michael Bolton fan. But you must really love his music, huh? <laughs> yeah, he's, 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 pretty, he's pretty good, I guess. Most attempts to build a superficial connection that is not based on an actual shared interest will come across as sneaky and will often be met with hostility or indifference. Sounds like a case of the Mondays. <laughs> the most effective way to tip the scales of power during a presentation is to establish professional rapport by demonstrating yourself as a collaborator for a solution. Our final interview showcases the accidental sale of Peter Gibbons. Peter experiences a revelation which leads him to stop caring about social expectations. As a result, he becomes more honest and more confident, which are fundamental to rapport building. During his interview, he takes no discomfort in sharing the harsh truth about the frustrations of his corporate experience. Oh, there you are. We're just talking about you. You must be Peter Gibbons. Would you walk us through a typical day for you? Well, I generally come in at least 15 minutes late. Uh, I use the side door, that way Lumberg can't see me. <laughs> the Bobs were hired to find solutions to such unproductive workplace conditions. Let me tell you something about TPS reports. They receive Peter's honesty as refreshing and informative. I have eight different bosses right now. A big pun? Eight bosses. Eight? Eight, Bob. In fact, Peter happens to expose the exact organizational pain points showcased in the background of the interview. Look at all the people they're firing. Since he's helping them do their job, their professional rapport is swiftly developed, and he is now viewed as a collaborator, a peer, someone on their level. Wow. His brutal honesty about the office dynamic inadvertently resonates with the Bobs. That's just a straight shooter with upper management written all over him. Ooh. Peter's interview may have been an accidental sale, but the lessons we can take from his revelation are profound. One, confidence is king. Peter just stopped caring about what other people think, and it made them that much more interested in what he had to say. I was asking what you were doing for lunch. Would you like to have lunch with me? <laughs> are, you, are you serious? Two, different is better than better. Peter wasn't particularly skilled at his job, but his refreshing honesty helped him stand apart from his peers at the office. So you're gonna fire Michael and Samir and you're gonna give me more money? Three, Identify problems to create opportunity by displaying awareness of the company's problems. But you know, Bob, it'll only make someone work just hard enough not to get fired. Peter set himself up as the means to a solution. If you can manage to disrupt expectations, demonstrate expertise, and establish yourself as a collaborator, 
you will quickly move up the corporate ladder and expand your client portfolio. Or if all else fails, you could always just set the building on fire. Want to learn more about sales theory and pop culture? Be sure to like and subscribe to get notified of our next segment.